Welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming and our Nora Guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe, and let's get into it. We're going to start off with a brief overview of the champion, just so you know their general playstyle and whether or not they're worth investing your time and resources into. Up first, we have Portals. Portals are the main mechanic of the Nora deck. They function similar to Bard's Chimes. When you draw a card, if it has a portal on it, it will then summon a random created unit for you. This leads perfectly into the next point, that is created units. This is another fundamental part of Nora's kit, obviously really benefiting from those portals, but she also has synergy with just created units in general, whether or not they actually come from those portals. Next up then, we have a two cost champ. Nora only costs two mana, very powerful effect. Once you get her to two stars, you can play her right away, and this opens up a lot of options for you, such as versatility. There's so many different ways you can build out this champion, which can really make playing them a very enjoyable experience because you can play them in so many different ways. There's some other champions where pretty much every time you play them, it feels like you're playing the same match over and over again, and so it can get a little bit too repetitive and a bit boring. With Nora, that generally isn't the case. Last up then, we have Aggressive. With being a two-cost champion that's able to summon a whole bunch of created units, you can really put the pressure on the enemy early. And while you may not be as aggressive as someone like Diana, where you're consistently ending turn one, you are a champion that really wants to be attacking as many times as possible and really putting your wide board of units to the test. Now that's it for the brief overview. Let's hop in game and better explain some of the points we touched on here. In game now, you see we have Nora at level 30 with those three stars. Nora herself, as you see here, is a two cost champion, Yordle with that subtype, and only from Bandal City. So most of the other Bandal champions have multi-region. Nora is just Bandal though. You see she has elusive, really nice effect, and a one two stat line to start off. So pretty weak, but that's kind of what you get when you have a two cost champion with elusive. Now they have that Nexus strike effect, plant a mysterious portal in the top four cards of your deck. So those mysterious portals, that's the main effect that Nora is built around. If we go and look at that mysterious portal, summon a random two or three cost follower. If your board is full, create a zero cost fleeting copy of it in hand instead. This is a really nice quality of life. So just in case your board is full and you draw a card that has portals on it, those units aren't necessarily wasted. You still have to play them that round because they are fleeting, but that gives you some more options for either replacing some of the units you have or maybe attacking or blocking and then being able to refill your board. So a really nice effect here. And this is a Nexus strike. So you actually have to hit with Nora, but if you can get something like double attack, both of those strikes will then plant those portals. Really nice right there. The level up is you've summoned six or more created allies. Again, the main way you're gonna get this is through those portals, but that's not necessarily the case. There are many ways in Path of Champions to summon created allies. And so you can actually level her up pretty easily even without having many portals activate. Also, this is an effect that doesn't need to have Nora on the board. And so there's many powers that you summon units at the start of the game. Those will immediately contribute to her level up. So she's actually very easy to level up. Now, once she does level up, she goes to a two, three, and now your mysterious portals summon four, five, six, or seven cost followers instead of the normal two to three cost. So all of those portals are giving you even more free value. And so you could really start building out a board of many strong units. You still have your nexus strike of planting a mysterious portal in the top four cards of your deck, which is also something that's very nice. The fact that this is just planting it in the top four cards, as opposed to just planting a portal somewhere in your deck, you know you're going to get this pretty quickly after planting it. Now her champion spell is Portal Palooza, so five cost focus, plant two mysterious portals in the top four cards of your deck, and then draw one. So since you're planting two portals in the top four cards, and then drawing a card, you're very likely going to hit a portal, so this is very nice effect. And then since this is her champion spell, it's also creating a Nora in your deck. So overall, a very solid champion. The two costs are very fun to play, especially when you can start getting a whole bunch of relics on them, but we'll touch on those a little bit later. Let's go look at her star powers. So up first, we'll go over her third star power. So when you summon a created ally, grant it 3-1. 
Now, if you just have the one star version of this, it's going to be grant a created ally 1-1. One, one. So giving some nice stat boost to all of your created units. And the fact that this is a 3-1 stat line as opposed to maybe like 2-2 two, two, is pretty nice. You do struggle with having a board that's potentially too full. So having more of an aggressive stat line so your units can do more damage but might die isn't that bad because you can normally then replace them with another unit. So overall, a very simple and straightforward star power, but one that does give you a good amount of power. Next up for the two star plus one starting mana, game start. And when you pick a card with a base cost of four or more, I love the fact they added base cost to this, plant a mysterious portal in the top four cards of your deck. So game starts right away. You're already starting the game with a portal. So when you're drawing cards, at the very beginning, you might immediately activate a portal. That is awesome. But then whenever you're playing a little bit more of an expensive card or a card that even has some cost reduction, as long as its base cost was four or higher, you are again planting more mysterious portals in the top four cards of your deck. With Nora, there's actually many different ways you can plant portals in your deck. I'm glad this is not just relying on one single mechanic. You have Nora doing it. You have some spells doing it and you also have your star powers doing it. This also gives you a good amount of depth when you're playing your cards, and when you're looking for upgrades from card shops or as after battle rewards, it pushes you towards getting some of those more expensive cards, or at least those cards that had a base cost of four or higher. So getting some of those more expensive cards that got cost reduced down are suddenly much more important for Nora, and there's just more to think about when you're deciding to pick up a card to add it to your deck. Overall, I really like these star powers. Pretty simple and straightforward, but it does actually give you a good amount of depth and more to think about when you're evaluating card pickups. All right, let's go look at her starting deck. So up first, we have Junk Construct. So two cost, four, two because of that pickaxe. Also, this gets the Skirmisher Saber. Last Breath, plant a Mysterious Portal in the top four cards of your deck. Really solid unit here. Also, this has a subtype, Fey. It's a cheap unit, but a great way to take out enemy targets with that high attack as well as Challenger. And then this is also a great way to make sure this unit actually dies to trigger that last breath effect and plant those portals. Then we have Nora, also a two cost. And then the proximity puff cap. So two cost slow with that charging sigil. So boosting all the damage by two. So deal three to a unit. If one of your traps or boons activated this round, deal five to it instead. So giving you some nice removal, although this is slow, so you can't really be very reactive with it. You have to be proactive and use this before the enemy plays a spell or tries to attack you. Next up, then we have Cosmic Binding. So normally a five cost, but this goes down to a two cost because of the tier of the goddess. Remember though, since this has a base cost of above four, when you play this, it is going to plant a portal in the top four cards of your deck. But fast speed, deal two to an enemy and stun another, plant six chimes in your deck. So pretty good card, giving you a little bit of potential removal, some CC, but then also another way to trigger some portals as well as plant some chimes. Up next then, we have the Looping Telescope. This also has a subtype of Fey and is a three cost, three, four because of that Giant's Belt. Play Manifest, a Celestial that costs three or less Epic or Multi-Region Follower. So this is another way to get a created ally, which again will trigger your star powers, even though it's not coming from a portal. Next up then, Tea Maker. Again, Fey, three cost, three, one, when I'm summoned, plant a mysterious portal in the top four cards of your deck. And this also has draw one, which is a very solid addition. Since you're trying to have all these portals, that draw normally is also going to count as a summon because it's going to most likely trigger a portal and summon another unit for you. Next up then, Yordle Captain, four cost, Yordle keyword, Yordle subtype, and it's a 5-5 five five with that studded leather. When you summon another ally with equal or less power than me, grant it 1-1. One, one. This also gets the Wanderer's Blessing, so when I'm summoned, plant six chimes on random cards in your deck. Again, having a little bit more chime synergy throughout the deck. Now, since this is a four cost, again, it's going to plant another portal in the top four cards of your deck. And this can potentially help scale up some of your weaker units. Now, this won't be as effective once you get Nora to three stars, because then when you summon a unit from a portal, they're getting an additional three power. So normally they're going to have a higher amount of power than this captain. But especially when you have Nora at one stars, and for some of those potentially earlier or weaker units you're going to summon, this can help buff them up just a little bit more. Next up then we have Portal Palooza. So this is Nora's champion spell, but it's also just a normal addition to your deck, which is always pretty nice. Makes it easier to get items on it. So we've already went over this, but five cost and focus speed. So this is already going to plant one portal 
on the top four cards of your deck just because it's over a four cost, but then plant two additional mysterious portals in the top four cards of your deck and then draw one. This also has the hand sensor, grant the top ally in your deck 1-1. One, one. So whatever you're drawing is going to also be a little bit buffed up if it is a unit. Really solid card, especially since it's essentially planting three portals in the top four cards of your deck. Pretty crazy. Last up then, we have Realms Caretaker. So six cost Fey, again, a subtype. Six, seven because of that phage. Each round, the first time one of your traps or boons activate, give all allies 1-1 one, one and impact this round. So a very large card with a strong effect. To be honest though, with Nora, you're normally ending games and putting a lot of pressure on early, so you're almost never getting to the point where you want to play this six cost unit. So often I end up cutting this one just because I never have the time to play it, but it is a solid card if you get to the point in the game where you can actually bring this out. Overall, a very well-constructed deck. Everything really synergizes quite well together. The only issue is the Yordle Captain being a little bit too weak to buff up your cards once you have Nora at three stars. But if you're dropping units that are already bigger than the Yordle Captain, that's a pretty good problem to have. Let's go look at the champion level ups just so you know when you're actually going to get some of these upgrades. So up first at level two, the Looping Telescope gets that giant spelt, make it a little bit stronger of a blocker. Next up, the Tea Maker gets the Philosopher's Stone at level three. Really nice upgrade to get some extra draw going and try to activate more of your portals. At six, the Junk Construct gets the Skirmisher's Saber. Really good upgrade to try to take out enemy targets especially since it is a last breath unit. At nine, Portal Palooza gets the hand sensor, pretty much your weakest upgrade, but still a nice little bonus to have. At 12, Yordle Captain gets the studded leather, pretty solid since that's not only buffing him up, but also increases the chances he's going to be able to buff up other units as well. At 15, the Cosmic Binding gets the Tier of the Goddess, making it much more playable, going from a 5 cost to a 3 cost. At 18, the Realm Caretaker gets that Phage. Again, a decent upgrade, but honestly, you're rarely ever going to play this card. At 21, the Proximity Puff Cap gets the Charging Sigil Rank 2, giving it that 2 extra damage. This upgrade makes the card much better. It normally is a bit too weak without the upgrade, but with that charging sigil, it's now a very good removal tool. 24, the Junk Construct gets also the Pickaxe to make it even more aggressive. Nice right there. 27, and the last upgrade, the Yordle Captain gets the Wanderer's Blessing. Not that big of a deal, but still a nice upgrade to have. Overall, very well-made deck with some solid upgrades. And as we tried to mention with every single unit, pretty much all of them have a subtype, which will be very important for the relics. So up first, let's talk about what we've been kind of hinting at. The Beast Within Power Allies have Overwhelm, and if they have a subtype, 1-1. One, one. So pretty much your entire deck has a subtype, so they're all going to get those extra stats from the Beast Within. And then all of your units having Overwhelm is very powerful, especially since you're trying to attack with a full board fairly often. So this is a very nice general relic to throw on if you have the opportunity. Let's also quickly go over Nora's signature relic. So Nora's Portal Accelerator. This is one you can get if you buy the Nora bundle in the shop. So power, game start, if I'm Nora, plus one starting mana. So that's a very good effect if you're playing Nora. And then when you summon a created ally, grant it impact. Since you're already really trying to summon a lot of created allies, this is going to give you a lot of extra damage on the enemy nexus. So overall, a pretty solid relic, although I don't think it is that necessary. For one, it's generally only usable on Nora. There's some niche cases where you could maybe use this on other champions, but it's not like Starforge Gauntlets where you're trying to put it on as many champions as possible. But if you're playing Nora, it is a very solid relic. But I wouldn't even say it is part of her best relic build, in my opinion. Now, what is her best relic build? I think it is probably this one right over here. So as you see, these are all three support relics. I think it's a very fun playstyle. Up first, we have the Transmogulator. So support, transform my supported ally into a random follower that costs three or more. So this is going to be another created unit. So this can trigger your star powers, giving this unit that three power and one health. This also triggers your level up. So very strong as well. Also, if you don't know, your relics activate from top to bottom. So the order of operations is actually pretty important here. So first, we're transforming whatever follower we're supporting into one that costs three more, which is pretty big. And then we have the spectral scissors. So this is going to give Nora two extra power great right there but then support grant my supported ally ephemeral 
and then summon a exact copy of it attacking. So this is then creating a, another copy of the card that you just created because of the transmogulator. That second copy of the card is then triggering your star powers again. So it's getting another three one. So it's going up to a six two in stats in addition to whatever stats it already had. So absolutely massive. And then you can finish this up with the Corrupted Star Fragment. So support, kill my supported ally, grant me its keywords and stats. So now all of those extra stats you just gave to that one unit, you're now putting them all on Nora, but you still have another copy of it that is also attacking with you. This is a very fun and aggressive build that really helps you build up your Nora because she's going to get a whole bunch of stats on her. This is also a very good way for clearing out your board. Normally your board can get a little bit too full. So using your Corrupted Star Fragment to get rid of one of your cards is quite helpful, but you're still saving all of those stats. You're summoning several units, and so those level up your Nora very quickly. And so far, this is just the best relic setup that I've found so far with Nora. Now, even if you don't pair all of these relics together, they're still very strong with Nora. Again, the Corrupted Star Fragment, great to free up space in your board, but then also buff up your Nora. Spectral Scissors, getting extra damage in your Nora is really good. This also works to free up your board because you're granting your supported unit Ephemeral, so it's going to die after it strikes. And since you're summoning an exact copy of it, that exact copy is also going to be ephemeral. So while this puts more pressure on the enemy, it is still also freeing up space on your board. Then the transmogulator, transforming whatever unit you support into a random follower that costs three more. More than likely, whatever you transform that unit into is going to be far stronger than the one you supported since it costs three higher. And also that just counts as another created unit. So more Nora synergy. So all these relics individually, very good for Nora. But if you combine them in this order, I think they are amazing. Now, since she's a two cost champion, there's a lot of different ways you can build her. We'll try to briefly go over a lot of the other relics I think work quite well. Oath of the Guardians, play shuffle five level two champions into your deck, then double the stats and draw one of them. This can work out quite well, especially if you want to pair this with the Star Gem, which buffs up and reduces the cost of all of your champions. Can be a fun build. Beast Within we already touched on, but has great synergy for Nora. Archangel Staff, Round Start, Refill Your Spell Mana. This could be fun, especially if you want to go for a build where you paired this with your Grand General's Counter Plan to play a lot of your Portal Paloozas. The Warhammer and really any stat relics are very strong on some of these champions that you can play at the very start of the game and are elusive since you normally aren't going to have to worry about them getting blocked out. Condenser, support, create a one cost, one one copy of my supported ally in hand. This has pretty good synergy with Nora. I think the Transmogulator is better, but this lets you create another unit so you then can play them essentially, well, almost for free. They'll get buffed up from your star powers, so they still won't be that weak of a unit, and this will count towards your level up as well. So another decent option right there. Shade Leaf, this can be another decent relic if you want to try to support more units and just have an army of elusives. Quite often people use this with the Corrupted Star Fragment to give their champion elusive, but you already have elusive, so it doesn't really matter that much. Blade Rack, allies have Challenger. Since you're normally going to have a pretty full board, making sure everyone takes the best attacks possible can be quite helpful. I normally prefer something such as the Beast Within to just give your units Overwhelm instead and a couple extra stats, but this can be a decent alternative. Star Gem, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but if you want to pair this, especially with Oath of the Guardians, it is a pretty solid combo. Succubus Brand, 1-1, one, one, when I kill a unit, summon a random husk. So this is one I actually haven't tested out yet myself, didn't really think about it until this very moment, but it's able to give your unit a couple extra stats. When you kill a unit, summon a random husk, so those summoned husks will be created units. So those can trigger your star powers, meaning they're going to be buffed up even more. So another great way to try to trigger your star powers as well as your level up condition. And this will really help any cards you then play afterwards. Normally your board is going to be too full to really make use of this, but there could be some decent synergy there. Grand General's Counter Plan, we touched on this with Archangel Staff, but if you have this on your Nora, then round start, you're going to be creating a copy of her champion spell. So great way if you want to just make a bunch of extra portals and have some extra draw. Troll King's Crown, allies have overwhelm. Great if you do not have the beast within. Now let's finish up with some common relics and what relics you potentially want to be using when you first get Nora. So up first, you probably want to be using the Chameleon's Necklace in pretty much any common slots that you have. So game start, create two copies of me in hand. Those are going to count as created units. So when you play them, they'll be able to trigger your star powers. So pretty solid addition right there. 
This is what I would use first. And again, pretty much anytime I have a common slot, this is what I would throw in there. Rageblade attack grant me 1-1. One, one. If you want to be able to scale up your Nora, this can be a decent way to do it if you have a common slot. You can play her round one and then just attack with her at every opportunity. So this will be able to help her get fairly big over the course of a game. Spell Shield, if you want a little bit of extra protection for your Nora, she is pretty fragile, so this can really help you out. In general though, for your first and any common slots, I would generally throw in the Chameleon's Necklace. For your first rare slot, I would go for either the Corrupted Star Fragment or the Transmogulator. And then for her first epic slot, if you're able to do that, I would either go for the Spectral Scissors, the Beast Within, or Nora's Portal Accelerator. Any of those will be solid epic relics for you to throw on. Also, one last epic that I didn't touch on because I don't have it yet, but Echoing Spirit Game Start creates seven copies of you in your deck. Champion spells cost one less. This is great for Nora as well. Like with the Chameleon's Necklace, since you're creating the seven copies, when you play one of these created copies, they're able to trigger your star powers getting buffed up, and then also reducing down the cost of your Portal Palooza and having some extra of those in your hand is pretty solid. So Echoing Spirit is another great epic relic to use if you have the opportunity. All right, that's it for all the relics we wanted to go over. Now, Nora is a very versatile champion, so there's plenty of different ways you can build her. She can make use of just about every relic. So just because we didn't mention one here doesn't mean it's a bad relic. Just didn't want to be here all day going over every single relic possible. All right, let's go look at some cards to look out for, powers to look out for, support champions to look out for, and finish out with where we think she ranks overall. Taking a look at powers now, up first we have gearing up, game start, summon two armed gearheads. Now this is really any of the powers that are able to summon units at the start of the game, not just this one. These units will trigger your star powers because they will count as created units, so they're going to get buffed stats, but then they will also count towards Nora's level up, and so it can help level her up very quickly. So while we threw up the gearing up, any of the powers that summon units at the start of the game is very strong. Grab any of those that you see, very good for Nora. Seed of Power, Game Start, Summon a Emperor's Dais. That summons a landmark that when you attack, it summons a attacking Sand Soldier. Again, summoning a created unit. Great synergy for you. And then last up here, Stabilize. When you summon a champion, summon an exact ephemeral copy of it. Now this is a very solid power, especially if you have some of the support relics we talked about. And there's actually a devastating combination that we'll get into a little bit later that is really enabled with this power. But overall, very solid power. Pick it up if you see it. Next up then, Domination Round Start Rally. Your main power comes from all of your units, so being able to attack every single round is really good. If you have your Nora on the board, more opportunities for her to get those Nexus strikes off to plant even more portals. Really solid power. Little Buddies round start summon a random one cost Poro. This ties into what we're saying with the last round of powers, but anything that can summon units at the start of the game is really good. And this is summoning units at the start of every single round. These are going to be triggering your star powers. So they're going to be very big Poros. They're going to help you level up very quickly and just help you put the pressure on the enemy throughout the entire game. Next up then, rush them down. When you summon an ally, give it 1-1 one, one this round. Since you're summoning so many units, giving them some buff stats is quite nice, especially because these units you're summoning Often they might just be around for a single round because you're trying to just throw them at the enemy and you don't particularly care if a lot of them die because you're just going to replace them right away anyways. Last up then for powers, sharing is caring. When you summon an ally, grant its keywords to all other allies. Since you're summoning so many units, this just spreads like crazy and you can have a board full of your units with so many different keywords. It's incredibly powerful. And if you're using Nora's Relic that you get in her bundle, that gives your created allies impact, and when you summon an ally with impact for sharing is caring, it gives that impact to everyone, and impact can stack up several times, and so a very powerful effect if you can pick it up in game. Next up then, lie in wait. Allies everywhere that cost three or less are lurkers and have lurk. That's going to be most of your units. This can really help you Again, put that pressure on early and just scale up your units even more. Really solid power to pick up. Last up then, Crush, Allies Have Overwhelm. Again, your power is coming from just attacking with all of your units and your full board. So making sure they can actually attack and hit the enemy Nexus and they're not just getting blocked out is very important. One of the biggest issues for Nor, especially early on, is closing out games. Because normally you're attacking with these big boards, but 
all your units are just getting blocked. So having that overwhelm is very handy. Next up then, let's take a look at some support champions or your reasons for potentially picking up some champions. As always, this is not a exhaustive list, just some of the reasons you might wanna consider when looking at your support champions. So up first, creative units. If they create units, you probably wanna pick them up and then manifest or invoke. Both of those can, again, make created units for you. So if your support champion has invoke or manifest in their kit, probably gonna be a decent one to pick up. Unless it specifically says manifest or invoke a spell, then you don't really care quite as much. So first up then we have Heimer or Heimerdinger, great for creating all of his different turrets. Next up then we have Zoe, very cheap unit, also has elusive, and then they can make a lot of cheap invokes or invokes that are able to give you some cheap units that will also count as created units. So some great synergy there. And last up, Rumble, he's able to manifest his different mecha yordles, which again, are gonna count as created units. So some great synergy for you overall. Now let's look at some cards to look out for and we'll go from left to right. So up first, Mr. Thrift, just a simple one cost. When one or more of your traps or boons activate, plant two of it in that player's deck. So you can have this sit on your board. When one of your portals activates, he plants more portals in your deck. So pretty solid pickup if you see it. Next up then the Bandling Bandoliers. When I'm summoned, create a Hungry Owl Cat in hand. So that's really nice that you're creating another unit from this card. Same with the Bandle Commando. Nexus Strike, create a Hungry Owl Cat in hand. Again, another card that can create a unit for you. Next up then, Sapling Toss. Summon a Sapling at next round start. And this also had Summoning Beacon. So from this one card, you're getting two created units. Next up then, Magical Journey. Two cost burst. Plant a Mysterious Portal in the top four cards of your deck. And plant a Chime on the top card in your deck. This also had Manifest a card from your region. So this is just doing pretty much everything you want. Giving you portals and manifesting some created cards. Parallel Convergence. This card specifically is crazy. So start a free attack with an exact ephemeral copy of each ally. So normally you have a full board. So this is going to create a copy of all of your units. All of those units, since they're created copies, are going to be triggered in your star powers. So they're all going to be a lot stronger. And this will normally just like immediately level up your Nora because all the created units you're summoning. And this one even had invoke. So more opportunity to try to get created units. Next up, then we have Faye Sprout. So one cost manifest a fey and granted one one and this even had manifest on it again last up then keeper's verdict now we don't actually really care so much about this one as far as the spell but just the fact it had nora's t game start plant a mysterious portal on me now for these cards most of these aren't specific cards that you have to look out for themselves but just what types of cards you should be looking for as you're going through your adventures anything that's able to create more units or any cards that have like summoning beacon on it to give you another created unit, or if they have invoke, manifest, Nora's T, these are all the sorts of upgrades you want to be looking for as you're going through your adventures. Parallel Convergence specifically is crazy. Definitely pick that up anytime you see it though. Next up then, tips and tricks. So this is specifically something you can do if you have Nora with that build we showcased earlier. So up first, you have the Transmogulator, support, transform my supported ally into a unit that costs three more. Then below that, you have the Spectral Scissors, two power, and summon a ephemeral copy of the unit I support. And then last up, the Corrupted Star Fragment. So what's going to happen here is this first Nora is going to transform this second Nora into a bigger unit. They're then going to summon another unit right over here, and then they're going to consume all these stats on to Nora. So this second Nora right here is not going to stay a Nora, it's going to get transformed into a much larger unit. And so this Nora, all of its support effects, those are not gonna go off because it's transformed into a different unit. So we're getting a whole bunch of stats on the first Nora, but then since we're summoning that unit over here, this third Nora is then going again transform it into one that costs three more, summon another ephemeral copy of it, and then consume this copy to get all of the stats. So essentially we're taking one card. In this case, it's another Nora, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any card right here. We're transformed into one that costs three more. And then this Nora is doing the same thing. So we're taking a card and we're transforming it into one that costs six more than it. So massive amounts of power. And we're also buffing up these two Noras to have ridiculous amounts of stats. Now I know this might seem fairly confusing, but it's a very powerful combo and one I highly recommend trying out if you're able to get some of these relics because it makes your Nora ridiculously powerful. All right, I decided to hop in game to better explain this. 
So right now we have one unit on the board. We're going to play our Nora. We're able to get uh, stabilized as a power. They're going to frostbite it. So we're going to place one Nora down. We're then going to put our unit and then we're going to have our second unit. These are the three relics we're using. The order does matter. So this first one is going to transform this into one that costs three more. So it's going to become a six cost. And then it's going to summon a second copy over here because of the spectral scissors. And then Nora is going to take all of the stats of this unit and put them onto herself by consuming it. This Nora over here is going to transform it into one three higher. So now a nine cost then summon another copy over here and put all those stats onto herself. So let's see what madness really happens here. All right, so as you see, able to one shot this boss. All right, last up, we have the rankings. So I think before level 20 and even after level 20, I think she is a S tier champion. Really, really good. Not quite as good as like Aurelian Soul or Jinx or potentially some of those other just ridiculously crazy champions, but definitely in the S tier, she is very, very powerful. For regional rankings, I think she is the best out of the Bandle City champions. As far as some pros, I think she's very fun. She's a very random playstyle, so that helps keep it fun and really makes your games feel quite different. Very versatile, so there's a lot of different ways you can actually play her. And Really, the only con is limited removal and CC. You don't have that many ways to deal with enemy targets, and so you can feel like you have limited options overall, but she more than makes up for that with the rest of her amazing kit. All right, that's it for our Nora guide. I hope it helped you out. If it did, definitely like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.